Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chris White with the American Battlefield Trust, and we're coming to you again from the Confederate Memorial Hall and Museum here in New Orleans. Um, we're really excited. We're pulling out some great things from the collection, and we're actually working with some very delicate uh, items. These are leather items, and some of them are pretty rare. Uh, first off, I'm going to hold up a uh, leather scabbard. This would be a bayonet scabbard. You can still see that it has the brass tip on the end, which is key, because if you don't have one of these tips on the end, your bayonet sticks out to the side, and you do a lot of turnings and infantry man and you'll stab your buddy in the leg. They don't like that. Uh, if you're a reenactor, you know it's a rule. You have to have a brass tip on your scabbard. We have a small cap pouch. I'm not going to open this up because it's so fr uh, fragile, but you might be able to see that this is a stamped uh, cap box. This will be hold your percussion caps, which would have fulminate of mercury inside of it. That's what's going to produce your spark when your hammer hits the cone and off goes your gun. In the rear, you can actually still see the belt loops that would go right through your belt. So this would be uh, held on your right side of your belt, on your hip. We have two rare cartridge boxes. This one I'm not going to open up. I'll open up the other one. Uh, this one is a Confederate-made cartridge box. Again, this will be held on your belt. You won't be using this with one of your shoulder straps. You can see that the rear uh, belt strap is gone. But over on this, you see the very famous inside as I open it up tins that would be inside of your cartridge boxes. Now, many soldiers will take out the, the tins for a variety of reasons, but this is actually holding its form. And unlike most, these are actually sewn in, uh, which is very rare. To give you a comparison, here is a US made uh, cartridge box a little bit later in the war because it's stamped. Again, I'm not gonna open this up just given the fragile nature of this cartridge box. This could be worn on your belt. You can see the belt straps here or you could put it on a shoulder sling, which would go across you diagonally, worn on your right hip. All Civil War soldiers are righties. <laughs> then finally, we have an early war design, hard back, or hard back, because it's hard on your back, um, knapsack. This is very rare. There's actually wood inside of this. It's very uncomfortable. You can actually see the, the roll straps for your blanket. Those are very rare to find. And you can also see the shoulder straps are still here. If this was in a little bit better condition, you could put this right on, walk right out the door. You might be more familiar with the soft packs that come out a little bit later in the war, much easier on your back, and you could actually put them together. You'd have two different sides, fold it together, put your blanket on the top. This would have been used during the Mexican-American War all the way up into the early Civil War. Wow, we're seeing all sorts of incredible stuff here at the Confederate Memorial Hall Museum. And if you could come a little closer, check this out. This is just, I've never seen one in such good shape. A beautiful Confederate wool uh, blanket roll or bed roll right here. Um, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, just imagine some of the most famous photos of Confederates of the Civil War, namely the three Confederate prisoners on Seminary Ridge wearing something just like this. Incredible. This is one, um, it's one of the rarest of the rare, as Don Troiani calls this Washington Artillery of New Orleans, Louisiana officer's coat. This is from one of the officers in the 5th Company of the Washington Artillery, which is still an active uh, National Guard unit. Uh, Connor, if you want to walk in here a little bit, we'll take a look. The Washington Artillery is an artillery unit, and we're going to have red piping here. Red is going to signify that they are part of the artillery, this officer here. Uh, blue would be for the infantry. You would have yellow for cavalry, green for, for medicine, and so, so on and so forth, depending where you are. Uh, the, uh, this would have been part of a three-piece suit, a vest would have been under here, he would have had this coat, and then he would have had his trousers with him as well. Collar would have been high, it could have been worn up, or it could have been worn down, not quite sure, uh, because some of the buttons have been taken off, and we lost our insignia on this one. But this is a beautiful coat, and I'm going to have Connor come back over here, uh, just to show you one item, even though this is more of a dress coat, it actually doesn't split in the back like some of our other coats you would see during the Civil War, like this frock coat that's right behind it. This frock coat is actually uh, a Confederate coat. You're going to notice it has the Federal Eagle buttons on it, though, so we're going to be using what we have to create these uniforms. Um, in back here, some of the frock coats actually would have pockets in the back side. You could actually put a manual back there. You could put letters. You could put anything else you would like. Uh, turning this around, we can see on the sleeves, we have Austrian braiding. This Austrian braiding is going to show us that he is indeed an officer. Uh, up on the top, we'll take a look at his collar. These are three bars. This is showing that he's a captain. One would have been a second lieutenant, two for a first lieutenant, and three is for our captains. This is a, a double-breasted 
frock coat that we're looking at here. Trying to get a little better view for Connor. Uh, even though he's wearing red, this was actually part of the 6th Virginia Infantry. Uh, so it should have technically been a blue field on here or a different color, but we have red instead. These are just two of the uniform pieces here at the Confederate Memorial Hall Museum in New Orleans.